We have all heard that sugar is bad for you, but why is it bad? You may have heard about insulin resistance or diabetes, but what are these things? What is insulin and what is diabetes? That's what I'm going to look at in today's video. I'm going to go into detail about what happens if we don't look after this system, if we do eat a lot of sugar and then we get insulin resistance, which may lead to diabetes. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what is insulin resistance? How does it affect your body? And then to end it, I'm going to give you three things that you can do right now to reduce the risk of getting insulin resistance. Let's get into it. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for listening. I really love and appreciate your support. For any of you who this is your first time listening to me, I'm a qualified naturopath and I am passionate about health, business and overall success. And that is why I'm providing you with these videos, these podcasts, so you can be informed, so you can make the right decisions for your health. Well, Today's topic, I absolutely love. I love it, love it, love it. There is so much to it than this short half an hour or so video. There's so much more that I can talk about. I'm gonna try and give you as much information as I can in a short period. After this, you're gonna be equipped. You're gonna know what insulin is, and you're also gonna know how to ensure that you don't get insulin resistance. And then later on, the risk of diabetes is reduced. So, to start off with, to understand the role of insulin across a wide range of physiological processes alongside its actions from the molecular to the whole body level, it has significant implications for much, many, many, many chronic diseases seen in the Western population today. So what I'm saying here is, is that it is key to understand insulin and insulin resistance because it has a huge impact on many diseases that we are faced with in the Western society, in the Western world, in today's modern world. It just has, has such a huge, huge impact. And that's why I thought it is an absolutely great topic to talk about and get into. So to start off with, let's have a look at as simply, what is insulin resistance? What does that mean when someone says to you, I have insulin resistance? Or what happens when a doctor says to you, you have insulin resistance? What does that mean? Well, Insulin is one of the first words in insulin resistance. So let's go back to basics and look at what is insulin. Well, in 1921, insulin was isolated and available in form for therapeutical administration. That is like 1920s. That is so long ago. It is a while ago. So it's, it's a hormone made by the beta cells in your pancreas that allows your body to use up glucose. And glucose is sugar. So we need insulin to make use of glucose. So insulin helps keep your body, keep your blood sugar levels from being too high or too low. We want that balance, which is what I keep talking about. We need the balance. We don't want it too high and we definitely don't want it too low because there are so many risks associated with it. So when we eat, so when we eat, so let's say we just had lunch or dinner, we put food into our mouth insulin is released in our body by our beta cells in the pancreas into the bloodstream and then insulin helps move that sugar from the food from the food we eat into the cells so they can be used as energy so our cells need glucose to function and this is where insulin comes in insulin reduces blood glucose by in inducing glucose uptake in insulin sensitive tissue such as our skeletal muscle skeletal tissue our muscle fat and our heart insulin also inhibits glucose production in our liver our kidneys and small intestine to control blood glucose so what i want you to understand is so with, with so now that you understand kind of what glu, what insulin is we can't talk about insulin resistance without mentioning diabetes. So I used to always get confused. What is diabetes one? What is type two diabetes? I just used to get the two confused. So to clear it up, I'm going to tell you what type one and type two is. Type one diabetes means that your body produces little 
or absolutely no insulin, this has been destroyed by an autoimmune reaction in your body. And individuals like that require daily injections of insulin. Okay. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is where the body produces insulin. So it can produce this insulin, but the insulin does not work as well as it should be, or it is made to work. Often referred to insulin resistance. So the body cannot make enough to keep the balance right. The balance that we spoke about earlier. We don't want it too high, we don't want it too low. So that is type 2 diabetes. Now that we understand the role of insulin, we can explain insulin resistance, which is I love this topic. If you understand this, you will understand why and what you should be eating for your body to be just amazing and for you to have the success that you deserve. So insulin resistant is a condition which where the cells fail to respond normally to the hormone insulin. The resistance prevents muscle, fat, and liver cells from easily absorbing glucose and taking it in. So as a result, the body requires higher levels of insulin to come in for the glucose to go into the cells. So without enough insulin, excess glucose builds up in the bloodstream, leading to pre-diabetes, even diabetes or other serious health conditions. So that's to sum up what insulin resistance is. So think of it like this, right? Think of insulin as the key, so a key to get in. You have a door, insulin is the key to the cell. So the cell is here, you need the key to go in, right? So think of insulin as the key to the cell that allows the sugar to go in the cell. Without the key, no sugar can go in the cell. So you need the key to open up so the sugar can go into the cell. So the cell has energy to do what it is meant to do, to do its bodily functions that it's meant to be doing on a biochemistry level. With insulin sensitivity, the pancreas is always being told to keep producing insulin. So can you imagine telling, I don't know, you, let's say you're at a factory and you keep telling your worker, keep producing this, keep producing this, they're producing it, but it's not getting used properly. And it's just, it's not getting used. So this is what's happening is the pancreas is getting beaten up. It's going, produce insulin, produce insulin, produce it, produce it. But the cells are over it. They're just over it and do not want to unlock the door as they've been pumped for ages. So what's happening is there's a buildup of glucose sugar in our bloodstream. There's a buildup. So there is the insulin. So that's where the insulin resistant word comes in. So medically, there are a few characteristics that are defined for insulin resistance and they are increased um, HbA1c post prandial hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, impaired glucose tolerance, impaired insulin tolerance, decreased glucose infusion rate, increased hepatic glucose production, loss of first phase secretion of insulin, also increased inflammatory markers in the plasma. These are a number of things that are associated with insulin resistance. So we can see it's not just as simple as you have too much glucose in your bloodstream. It has a number of effects on our body. So generalized insulin resistance usually occurs primarily as a result of obesity and consequence calorie excess physical inactivity, genetics, and age. There are a number of factors also, but these are just some of the things that have been mentioned. So insulin resistance is associated with many serious medical conditions such as type 2 diabetes, which is what I spoke about earlier, hypertension, atherosclerosis, and metabolic syndrome. And these can result in havoc in our body. And this is why I want you to know how to ensure that you reduce your risk of getting insulin resistance. So what does all this mean? What does it all mean and how does it affect your body? Let's look into it. So how does insulin affect your body? Let's look at a number of things that it plays an effect on. The first one that I wanted to mention is a huge one and I've done a number of videos on it and I've spoken about it a lot, a lot because it is huge and there's so many individuals that have it and it is obesity. Obesity and insulin resistance go hand in hand and it's associated with an increased risk of developing insulin resistance. So the higher you have obesity, the more likely you are to get insulin resistance. So the European Group of Study of Insulin Resistance used 
clamps that they use um, in one th over 1,000 adults, both men and women, and that shown a direct, a significant direct relation between insulin resistance and BMI. So this just shows the higher BMI is. I'm not gonna argue if BMI is the right way to calculate anything, but this study is showing the higher BMI is, so the more fat you have on you, the higher your risk of insulin resistance. So increased in both hepatic and visceral fat are associated with alterations in glucose and lipid metabolism, which is what another study found out. So we can see here obesity goes hand in hand with insulin resistance. So which one came first? That's one to think about. We've also heard a lot of people have fatty liver. You know, there's even kids are being diagnosed with fatty liver. It's it's crazy what the world is coming to. Fatty liver used to be diagnosed with mainly elderly individuals, but now we have fatty liver as early as children. It is crazy. So insulin resistance is involved in disease process of fatty liver. So insulin resistance promotes and acceler accelerates the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver. So the higher your insulin resistance is, the more likely you are to get non-alcoholic fatty liver. So insulin resistance and non-alcoholic fatty liver is categorized by reduction in whole body hepatic and adipose tissue insulin sensitivity. So insulin resistance may enhance hepatic fat accumulation, which means there's more fat around your liver by increasing free fatty acid delivery and by the effect of hyperinsulinia to stimulate anabolic processes. So what this is saying is the higher your insulin resistance is, the more likely you are to build fat around your liver, which essentially then causes fatty liver. So if you don't want fatty liver, don't get insulin resistance. Another interesting one that I found out was tumors, which a lot of individuals are going to the doctors and finding out that they have tumors, which is a bit of a shock to a number of individuals. But why did they occur? Why are they there? What type of tumors are there? Well, I looked into it and insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome are linked with a higher risk for cancer of the bladder, breast, colon, cervix, pancreas, prostate, and uterus. That is mind blowing. So the higher your risk of insulin resistance, the higher your risk of these cancers in particular. So the connection is the higher your insulin levels early in insulin resistance seem to fuel the growth of tumors and suppress the body's ability to protect itself by killing off these cancer cells, these tumor cells. And that's what this study found out. So this is absolutely crazy that insulin resistance, that this glucose in our blood, which is what, which is what insulin resistance is, the higher glucose in your blood is feeding these tumors, which means they're growing, which means they've got a higher chance of being cancerous. Crazy, right? Well, let's talk about the heart. How is insulin resistance linked to heart health? Well, insulin resistance has been shown in many humans and animal studies to increase the extent of myocardial injury and in the context of heart attacks, which may contribute to the increased risk of heart failure in affected individuals. So insulin resistance clearly affects our heart. Insulin resistance doubles your risk for a heart attack and stroke and triples the odds that your heart attack or brain attack will be deadly according to the International Diabetes Foundation. If you had a reason to decrease your sugar intake, if you had a reason not to have insulin resistance, this is clear. It just says here, it triples the odds that your heart attack or brain attack will be deadly. Think about that. Another interesting one that I want to talk about that I always blab on to is our memory because we need our brain. If we want to be successful in our business, if we want to be successful in overall life, have success, we need our brain health to be on point, to be switched on so you can succeed. A new study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease finds that insulin resistance caused in part by obesity, physical inactivity, is linked to a more rapid decline in cognitive performance. According to this research, both diabetic and non-diabetic subjects with insulin resistance experienced accelerated cognitive decline in executive function and memory. 
there you have it. The higher your insulin resistance, the lower your cognitive ability is. And this is a research study done that looked into it by the Alzheimer's disease. So this is a research study found in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. If you want it any clearer, it's right there. I have found more. A new study completed by the Iowa State University adds to the growing evidence that insulin resistance, a common occurrence among people who are obese, pre-diabetic, or have type 2 diabetes, may lead to memory loss, even Alzheimer's disease. And this is on top of the growing evidence that we've already spoken about and that's available out there. And another one, you ready for it? I've got another one. Researchers found a strong association between insulin resistance and memory function decline, increased the risk of Alzheimer's. This is crazy. This guy says, which is Ori, a PhD research scientist in the Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition, he says that insulin resistance is common in people who are obese, pre-diabetic and have type 2 diabetes and they have a risk of getting Alzheimer's, they have a risk of getting cognitive decline and impaired memory function. So I've spoken about many of them, I'll mention one last one because some people, a number of individuals have, have issues losing weight and they may not know why they have issues losing weight. Well, insulin resistance may be the reason why you have issues losing weight. So insulin resistance may be the real reason why you're not losing weight. Weight loss is not just about overeating or under-exercising. As you have excess glucose in your blood, which is not being utilized by your cells, which means the body is turning the extra energy glucose into fat storage for later, because a body's smart, it does that. So the body is smart like that, nothing gets wasted, and it's doing, it, it's doing us actually a favor. And this is a simple explanation. So in the morning, you may be exercising, but if your blood glucose level is high, you are not reducing the fat accumulated. And that glucose goes into fat storage, adds into adipose tissue, and you're unable to lose weight. So now that we've spoken about all the effects that insulin has on your body, what can you do about it? And what can you do now? Well, I'm going to talk about three little things, little techniques that you can implement right now so you can ensure that your risk of getting insulin resistant is reduced. Let's get into it. The first one I want to talk about is sleep. I've spoken about sleep so many times. I've done a podcast, a video, I've done posts, the list goes on. I love sleep. I absolutely love it. So in a study presented in 2015 in the Obesity Society, researchers found that just one night of sleep deprivation boosts insulin resistance as much as eating high fat foods for six months. Bam, if you need any more evidence than that, that is just crazy. One night of not sleeping well boosts your insulin resistance as much as eating and high fat foods for six months months. There is also accumulating evidence that chronic sleep deprivation may impact on insulin and insulin resistance. Recent epidemiological studies report that reduced sleep deprivation is associated with increased BMI. The higher your BMI, the more likely you're going to have insulin resistance. The less you sleep, the higher your BMI, the higher your risk of insulin resistance. Link right there. As I've mentioned before, sleep is an important time to restore and repair your body at a cellular level. This includes maintenance of the immune system and the body's metabolic functions. Stage three and four, called deep sleep, appear to be specifically important for the body's ability to use insulin later on, which is in the blood sugar. So if you're not getting that deep sleep, your insulin, your insulin, resistance you're more likely to get it and if you're not getting that deep sleep you're more likely to be obese you're more likely to get insulin resistance you're more likely to get metabolic syndrome a circadian rhythm affects so many areas of our life and i've spoken about this many of which you might have not even be aware of in addition to sleep wake cycle circadian rhythm also regulates our hormones and insulin is one of those hormones when circadian rhythm is out of sync the body's metabolic health can decline for a risk of diabetes is increased, a risk of metabolic syndrome is increased, a risk of insulin resistance is increased. So it is key to go to sleep when you're meant to go to sleep in line with that circadian rhythm. 
Another key one I want to talk about is exercise. So number two is exercise. Recent studies provide further evidence to support the notion that regular physical activity reduces the risk of insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes. Insulin and insulin sensitivity improves when individuals comply with an exercise program and physical activity. During exercise, muscle contractions stimulate improvements in insulin sensitivity and are associated with increased AMPK activity, which deactivates and promotes the cell membranes, and thereby it increases the glucose uptake. So what this means is if you're exercising and you're exercising and you're doing physical activity, that blood sugar in your blood is more likely to get taken up, which is what you want. So physical activity helps move sugar into your muscle for storage and promotes an immediate increase in insulin sensitivity, which can last two to 48 hours, depending on the exercise. So this is key to get that sugar in your bloodstream moving into the cells, which assists with insulin resistance. There are studies that suggest that dynamic strength training is an appropriate physical activity for management of insulin resistance. While both aerobic and resistant training increases insulin sensitivity, combining both in your routine appears to be most effective. So mix it up. And the last one is going to be a surprise. It's another hormone. Some people call it a vitamin, but let's go with vitamin because that's how you guys know it all. It is vitamin D, also known as hormone D, also known as the amazing, amazing vitamin that we all need. In humans, it has been shown that a majority of observational studies that vitamin D positively correlated with insulin sensitivity and its role is mediated both by direct mechanisms through the availability of vitamin D receptors in several tissues and indirectly through the change in calcium levels. So, the, so if you have normal levels of vitamin D, it assists with your insulin sensitivity. So what happens is vitamin D reduces the insulin resistance in the surrounding tissue and thus reduces the excessive insulin release in response to increased blood sugar due to insulin resistance. As a result, it increases insulin sensitivity. Therefore, vitamin D deficiency is a huge risk factor for metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. This 2017 study concluded that low vitamin D levels may accelerate the development of diabetes in individuals. How crazy is that? You wouldn't have thought vitamin D is linked with insulin sensitivity, would you? The association of vitamin D status and metabolic syndrome was reviewed recently in a meta-analysis of 28 independent published studies. These, funding, these studies showed a significant 55% reduction in the risk of diabetes, a 33% reduction in the risk of cardiovascular disease, a 51% reduction in metabolic syndrome, which is associated with a high vitamin D concentration. So that shows us how much vitamin D can help us with metabolic syndrome, with insulin resistance. So make sure you get your sun every day, make sure you check your vitamin D levels, and there you have it. Now you know what insulin resistance is, you know what insulin is, you know how you can prevent from getting type two diabetes, you know what you can do, get your sleep on, get your vitamin D on, get that exercise. The best thing is, sleep well, exercise in the sun, there you have it. And your risk of getting insulin resistance drops dramatically just by including that in your everyday life. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, this podcast. I love and appreciate your support. If you know someone who would love to listen to this, who would love to hear about this, please share it with them. Love, like, rate, share, do what you do best. Until next Monday, love you.